Welcome to Tucson, Arizona, McHale Center tonight for Pac-12 basketball presented by Domino's. The number three and unbeaten Arizona Wildcats host the defending WAC champion, Utah Valley Wolverines. Along with the Hall of Famer, Bill Walton, I'm Roxy Bernstein. Welcome to Tucson and Bill. Arizona's on a roll right now, and their big guys, Brandon Ashley, came up huge in their win over the weekend in overtime against Gonzaga. Roxy, a beautiful night to play basketball here in the desert. Oh, my goodness gracious, and what a game it was over the weekend against Gonzaga. Gonzaga had it, but if it was not for Brandon Ashley, the Arizona Wildcats would not be ranked number three and still undefeated. His ability to hit the perimeter jumper, to drive the lane, to get to the free throw line. You would think by this point in the game they might want to guard Brandon Ashley. This guy is so good. A classically beautiful player, unlimited potential. He is not standing alone, though. This gigantic wall of saguaro cactuses, so prickly, so tough, so fierce, so dynamic and explosive. So many of them, Caleb Tarzuski, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, and then the new one, Stanley Johnson. We'll be talking about him all night long. So much to talk about with Arizona. The biggest issue, can they focus in on tonight's game before they start thinking ahead of big game Michigan this weekend? And then long-term Kentucky, Duke, and Texas, bring them on. Let's play. Well, tonight, it's Utah Valley. That's a yeah. team they need to be focused with. The they have a pretty good player. The Wolverines have a young player. They're playing the Wolverines again on Saturday. But these Wolverines, Zach Nelson, is really a versatile player for them. Zach Nelson, he has the chance. He's a California guy, just a sophomore. He has a chance, by the time his career is over, to be the greatest player in the history of this storied program. He's got a magnificent coach. They've got a real squad here. It's going to be fun to watch. A great night of basketball, Roxy. Let's play. They won the WAC last season for Arizona. They've won 26 straight games here at McHale Center. It's number three, Arizona. Utah Valley from Tucson tonight. The lineup's an opening tip straight ahead on Pac-12 Networks. Tucson, Arizona, McHale Center tonight. Pac-12 basketball presented by Domino's. The 8-0. Number three, Arizona Wildcats in Utah Valley here tonight. Let's give it tonight. Starting lineups brought to you by Domino's. And for the Wolverines, who last year won the WAC regular season championship, they're three and four. Mitch Bruniel starts with Brendan Evans, Zach Nelson, Marcel Davis, and Dante Williams, the five for the Wolverines. For the Arizona Wildcats, the same five. It is Stanley Johnson, Brandon Ashley up front with Kayla Tarzuski in the middle. T.J. McConnell, the senior point guard, and Gabe York is the other guard for the Wildcats. Overwhelming edge to Arizona in terms of size, strength, reputation, program. The dream, the vision, the path to victory for Utah Valley has to be their mental acuity and their emotional commitment. And they follow their great coach, Dick Hunsaker, who is the reigning WAC coach of the year. This Tremendous guy coach. He's 13, done it all. 13 years, what he's done in terms of building this program. Utah Valley, the second largest public school in all the state of Utah. They'll re-jump that. Oh, please. It's an Arizona basketball off the jump ball. But for Utah Valley, they do have a couple of wins over Pac-12 teams in their past. They're two and five all time against the conference. Who they, they beat? They beat Oregon State back in 2010. And that, they beat the Arizona State Sun ago. Devils. It wasn't all that long ago either. They beat Arizona State. As there is a whistle and a three second call immediately against Caleb Tarzuski and the Arizona Wildcats, so a turnover. But they also beat ASU back in 2005. Wow. So two big victories over the Conference of Champions. But this is their seventh straight road game, the Utah Valley Wolverines. And yeah, they played opening night, Bill, at home against South Dakota. And then seven consecutive road games. And this is the seventh before going home to play Utah State in Orem, Utah on Saturday night. Great defensive pressure out front by Gabe York. Here's Nelson, has a shot blocked by Ashley. And a foul is called, is trying to break away from the pack with Stanley Johnson. It's against Utah Valley. The length of Brandon Ashley. You're going to have to release that shot quicker if you're Zach Nelson. Brandon Ashley played 38 minutes of that overtime game that you called against Gonzaga right here in McHale. He was really good in that game, Bill. And when Arizona needed him to step up, he made some big plays down the stretch. Excellent pass there, the back cut by D.J. McConnell. Eyes on the ball defensively at all times. 
So TJ McConnell, the first points of the night. Versatility will be a trademark of this current squad for Sean Miller. Here is Mitch Brunel, a transfer from Utah State. Do these fans stand the entire game? They're going to stand until Utah Valley scores, Bill. So a lot of times they're standing for a long time. But not tonight. Driving to the basket, Marcel Davis that's ties your, the game. That's in your face, Rocky. That was right at me. You, you were calling it out that they weren't going to score all game. They scored on the very first possession. Take that. And we're tied at two, and everybody's sitting down. And now we can see. Stanley Johnson missing a three. And Dante Williams, the rebound here is Marcel Davis for Utah Valley. Incredible, legendary conference, the WAC conference. Changed so much over the years, though, with the revolving participants. Picked up by Johnson after York lost it and won the freshman, Stanley Johnson. My first time seeing Stanley Johnson. I'm excited as can be. Got to meet him today at shoot around, practice, broken play here. Gabe York just left a little bit too much show on it. But this guy's a real player. I mean, an incredible talent. Comes from Orange County, California, four time California state champion, and his excellent coach, Sean Miller. Sean Miller's pregame speech today at the shoot around yeah. was just so inspirational. We kept coming back to, the, you know, Forget about the Kentuckys, forget about the Dukes, forget about the Texas, the teams that these players are going to be focused in on. You've got to take care of business today. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, an absolute star, selfless, completely dedicated to the goals of the team. This team, Arizona, has it all. They are the envy of every program west of Lexington, Kentucky. Here is Caleb Tarzuski working on Chad Ross, who just checked in for Utah Valley. And the rebound cleared by Mitch Bruniel and the Wolverines. Tarzuski's offensive contributions will be critical in the big picture for Arizona. And him being matched up here against a much shorter opponent, Mitch Bruniel, that's going to be very tough. They just might want to switch a lot of those things, keep Tarzuski near the basket. Here is Bruniel, and there's a switch with Stanley Johnson on him now. Shot clock inside 10. Beautiful setup offense. Chad Ross, a three. Just his second three-pointer of the season. And the senior from Snellville, Georgia, gives Utah Valley a 5-4 lead. Early substitutions here for Hunsaker. He'll get 10 guys, 11 guys out there all game long. tarzuski has got to convert that and get to the free throw line. Wave off the shot, says Michael Reed. A foul first on the floor against Utah Valley. When is the NCAA going to modernize the continuation rule? I just don't understand it. The screen which creates the double team along the baseline and then kick it right back out. Bruniel, an excellent creative player there. Drawing two guys, realizing his job is to set it up for his teammates. Marcel Davis the foul. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is in for the Wildcats. Beautiful passing, TJ McConnell. Spins out for Ashley in the rebound, Chad Ross. For Utah Valley. If you're Arizona, just pound every possession. Utah Valley does not have the size and the strength. Keep going or, inside, or go right depth, out. And you don't have to worry about Utah Valley fast breaking against you. They're not looking to get it in an up and down game. Reach it foul against the Wildcats. It's on TJ oh, McConnell. Four, TJ but Sean Miller, first person, first still so frustrated five. after the Gonzaga game today. Frustrated with the lack of flow offensively. I mean, this guy, what he has done, his level of intensity, instruction, enthusiasm, this guy is the platinum standard of what it means to be a great young coach. Off balance shot up and in by Darius Hamilton, and it's a three-point lead for Utah Valley. Off balance floater from TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell is gonna have to make plays like that on a consistent basis. Shot missed. Hunsaker is not going to like that shot selection. Alex Carr off the mark and immediately he's you, going to his bench. You, you have to control tempo here when you're playing against a team with such size, such strength, such talent. I mean, it's going to have to be a perfect game for Utah Valley. Brandon Ashley going to the line. But first on Chad Ross. I love WAC basketball and what WAC Western Athletic Conference. Yes. And the, the 
the all-time coaches that they've had here, guys like Bear Haskins, Utah, Stan Watts, BYU, Lou Henson, New Mexico State, Jack Gardner, Utah, Rick Majerus, a bunch of places, Jerry Tarkanian. And now you get Dick Hunsaker. Goodness gracious, what a seamless transition. And he's a disciple of Rick Majerus. Well, they spent a lot of time together, yes. One point lead for the Wildcats. Utah Valley hitting three of their first five shots from the field. Nice job by TJ McConnell putting pressure on the advance of the ball. Bruneal, wild out of control. Got it back. Shot opportunities for Utah Valley. And a foul against TJ McConnell, that's two. Utah Valley, a good start for the Wolverines on the road in Tucson. Arizona leads it by one. Presented by Domino's. Visit Domino's.com right now to take advantage of a great offer on pizzas from Domino's. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. In the desert for Pac-12 basketball this Tuesday night, a one-point lead for the Arizona Wildcats over the Utah Valley Wolverines. And we alluded to this, Bill, about the road trip that Utah Valley has been on. Seven straight road games, including tonight here in Tucson. All over the place. Places that I haven't even been to. Have you been to all these places? I've been to some of them. Eastern Washington. Yeah, that's in Spokane. I've not been to Southern Utah. I've been there. That's in Cedar City. I've not been to Pocatello, Idaho. Oh, you're missing it. That's a great spot. UC I've been Davis, to Davis. Been there. Yeah, I've been to Sacramento. Oh, fantastic. I've not been to Montana State. I've been to the University of Montana. As a shot knocked in by Mitch Bruniel and a one-point lead for Utah Valley. The long and winding road. But that's where teams, good teams, under excellent coaching leadership, come together. That's what you live for, the ability to win on the road. That's an offensive foul, please. You can't like, just run into people who are already standing there. Michael Reed does not agree with Bill Walton, calls a block. And that's why he's the ref, and I'm sitting over here. <laughs> Darius Hamilton, the only left-hander on the team, looking at the ref saying, what is a foul? I'm standing right here. But good look there at the side of Rondé Hollis Jefferson's head with the carving cut into his hair. You didn't do that to him, did you? No, but uh, he, he said he knows the person who did that. It says... <laughs> I, I sure hope he knows the person that did it. Yes, but it's, uh, it's got four letters on there. Uh, C-H-A-P, standing for calm, humble, and patient. Three words that have never been associated with Bill Walton. <laughs> John Parker. Miller going to his bench, speaking of not being patient. Parker Jackson Cartwright is in. Elliot Pitts with Hollis Jefferson, Ashley, and Dusan Ristich is in, a seven-footer from Serbia. Inside, there's Darius Hamilton with his second bucket. Darius Hamilton doesn't play much. He's behind Zach Nelson, who gets a lot of time, but Hunsaker will get a lot of different players in there, and Zach Nelson is battling the flu right now. Ristich missing, chases down his own miss, and ties the game at 11. Deuston Ristich, one of the fine prospects here. This recruiting class, great freshman class. Stanley Johnson, Craig Victor, Parker Jackson Cartwright, perfectly suited for the NBA at some point. And then Deuston Ristich, that top class there. Offensive foul, they waved that off. And Legal screen, Darius Hamilton with his second foul. This is two games in a row. Where the little brothers are just getting the short end of the stick here. I don't understand that. That's what parents You're standing are, up for the little guy. That, that's what the parents are supposed, supposed to do is stand up and say, hey, got to make this fair, equitable. Let's go. Six team fouls against Utah Valley, only two against Arizona. We saw USD at Pauley Pavilion the other day in the very questionable calls in the second half. Utah Valley giving Arizona all they can handle early here in the desert. Great double team by Utah Valley. Hollis Jefferson missing a three from the corner. The rebound by Boston Goobler, who's in, a freshman. So here's Nelson, who, as Bill told you, is bothered by the flu and trying to give Dick Hunsaker everything he's got out there tonight as they reach in on Hollis Jefferson. So Boston Goobler, what a story. Just a freshman from Utah. I asked him how he got his name. I'm like, were his parents Celtic fans and big Larry Bird fans? He said, were no, they Bill Walton fans? No, no, no. But they were driving to the hospital for the birth of okay. Boston Goobler. 
and the dad is driving and the mom's going hurry up hurry up and they get stuck behind a car from massachusetts and so they just named the new baby boston just because they were stuck by the massachusetts car, on, license on plate. the way to the hospital to deliver young boston Google. the simple twist of fate beautiful zach nelson showing the promise zach nelson who leads his team in rebounding and block shots averages nine points a game his first point tonight puts utah valley up by two Elliot Pitts from the corner. And Elliot Pitts gives Arizona the lead. Elliot Pitts and Gabe York will be key components all year long. They're going to be the guys that spread the floor, stretch it out, knock down the jumpers, play the defense against the great athletic rangy guys. Goobler missing underneath. Bring that one back out. Jump ball. It belongs to Utah Valley as Pitts nailed the three. Now 9 of 16 from three this year. Parker Jackson cart right down the lane. He splits that double teaming defense and then just unselfishly lays it right off. Much like Steve Nash, who Parker C Jackson Cartwright is his Steve Nash is his favorite player ever. Ever. There's a shot in the three, knocked in by Jaden Jackson for Utah Valley. And the Wolverines lead it by two. Utah Valley playing excellent basketball in all aspects. Can they sustain? Deuce on Ristich is fouled. And here's that last three for the Wolverines. The baseline out of bounds play, the perfect execution. Jaden Jackson from Salt Lake City. Grew up watching those great jazz teams and had so many incredible shooters, including the current coach of the Phoenix Suns. Hornacek, Jeff Hornacek, who could stroke it with the best of them. One more for Dusan Ristic, the freshman from Serbia. You old enough to remember Darko Milicic? I am old enough to remember Darko Milicic, yes. These two guys, Darko and, and Dusan, Ristich. are from the same hometown. Born on the same street, a mile apart. Hollis Jefferson, just a beast on the offensive glass there. Calm, humble, patient, just like me. Novi Sad, is that how you say it, Serbia? Novi Sad. Novi Sad. You've been to Serbia? I have not been to Serbia. You need to get out more. I do need, I need to hang with you more. <laughs> Hollis Jefferson with a bucket. I'm just old. You've been to all I, these exotic places. I went there, I went there when I was 17. In high school. It's fantastic. Jaden Jackson missing in the rebound, Arizona. Here comes Hollis Jefferson. Hollis Jefferson, as improved a player as I've seen in all of college basketball. Block is called an Alex Carr. That's an offensive foul. Carr is there, and these Arizona players are lowering their shoulders and just running right through them. If your lead shoulder hits the guy on the near side, how can that be a defensive foul? The guy's running backwards. Coach Hunsaker, he'll use a ton of guys, and he'll bring them in, in and out on every possession. And for him to be the Bear Haskins whack coach of the year, because he played, Dick Hunsaker, Hunsaker played for Bear Haskins down at El Paso. He also then finished up at Weber State. Tough, hard-nosed point guard. What a teacher. What a strategist. What a motivator. What a leader. He's one of the real great in-game coaches as far as X's and O's you're going to see in college basketball. Well, and his son was the four-year star, Holton. Hunsaker. Holton Hunsaker just graduated. Now he's going to graduate school up at the University of Utah. Great screen that time by Zach Nelson. He was the point guard last year for... His dad, a team went on to win the WAC regular season crown. They lost the semifinals of the WAC tournament. They lost in the NIT, the game at Cal. Stanley Johnson fouled and won. Cannot say enough about Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Digs this ball out in transit, takes the ball away from the basket to create the opportunity for his teammate. This is a guy who was scheduled to start, but he got hurt early on in the season. Stoppage of play here is, I'm not sure what you describe somebody who throws something on the court from the arena. Parker Jackson Cartwright cleaned it up. 
The oh, officials are looking at the monitor for some reason. Arizona has opened up a five-point lead. Hopefully they're searching for the person that threw. I don't think the referees would search for that. They would leave that to security, maybe to Tucson police. I don't get that at all. We're at a, basket with we're, we're at a basketball game. Speaking of not getting it, one, yes. thing I, one thing I do get... One thing I do get as the referees... Figuring out if that's a kick ball or not. Well, finally, a PA announcement about security. But hey, let's talk about something fun. Yes. Like so this fun. coming February 3rd. Okay. Bob Dylan's going to release his up team album. A new album. A new album. Shadows in the Night. You, you old enough to remember Frank Sinatra? I am old enough to know okay, Frank Sinatra. Okay, so Frank's got all these songs. Right? Sure. And it, his songs have been covered so much, they've been buried. Okay. And so now Bob is going to come out and uncover, unbury all these songs from Frank Sinatra. So he's going to, he's re-recording these Frank Sinatra classics. In a total Bob Dylan way. Taking the 40-piece band that Frank, that Frank had into the five-piece combo that Bob has. The officials, by the way, are looking at something that transpired at midcourt. Off the ball. And, and they're to still see looking. if it warrants anything. Yeah, to see if they can find anything. I didn't see anything that would warrant anything in that replay right there. 21-16, Arizona with the lead. So, I got to imagine you're going to be one of the first people to get this Bob Dylan album. I pre-ordered it. Good hard screen right there. Perfectly legal. Zach Nelson streaks down the court. I'm not sure what's going on there. So Dick Hunsaker was trying to relate to the officials here. As Hunsaker talking to Mark Whitehead there about the screen. We talked about that great Arizona. Go, go ahead. One second. Utah Valley, because they asked the officials to look if an elbow was thrown by Stanley Johnson. Because there, it was deemed there was no elbow thrown there. They have, they, because they asked for review, they have lost a timeout because of Good. it. Just ignore the refs. Eight straight for the Wildcats. They lead it now, 22-17. If we only could. <laughs> Call your own fouls, right? <laughs> no, you can't have that. You never played against Magic Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have the pleasure. Beautiful. Nelson, a good look. Off on a three and the rebound, Johnson for the Wildcats. Excellent execution. The set offensive there. It's a screen and then step right back out and get the wide open shot. The, the Wildcats reluctant to come out that far against this diminutive front line for Utah Valley. Jackson Cartwright on the drive. Gets to the basket and the freshman with his first points. What a player. Smallest player in the Pac-12 this year. Plays like a giant, though. You really like his game, don't you? Well, this is my first time seeing him in person. I've seen him on television. I saw the San Diego State game from Maui. How come oh, we never get to go to Maui? Zero. we got to figure that out. we got to get on that trip. You make the call, right? I'll, I'll follow your lead. Okay. What's Arizona Larry? leads it by eight. What's Larry Scott's home number? Arizona basketball. Number three, Arizona leading Utah Valley, 24-16, 11-20 left first half. Tomorrow, it's more Pac-12 regional action on Pac-12 Network. First at five, the UCLA women play host to UC Riverside. Then at six, the Colorado Buffaloes, the men's team, takes on in-state rival Colorado State. Then at eight, men's basketball coverage continues. UCLA tips off against UC Riverside or Wyoming visits Cal. Live coverage starts tomorrow at 5 on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 Now. Check pac-12.com for games in your area. And don't forget the big tilt up in Utah tomorrow night. Utah I at can't BYU. forget about it. Why not? I'm going to be there. You're going? I'm going. You want to oh, come man, with? I'd love to. I've got to work tomorrow. And double. a double dribble against Nelson in Utah Valley. Pressure defense for Arizona. Wildcats. The best team in the conference, out of timeouts, both ends of the court. Ten straight points for Arizona. 
They made their last four shots. They're 8 of 13 overall for the field. Jackson Cartwright getting a lot of run right now with TJ McConnell on the bench with two fouls. Out there with York, Johnson. First look at the freshman from New Orleans, Craig Victor for Arizona. And Tarzuski back in the game. Craig Victor, one of that vaunted freshman class that just comes in out of New Orleans. We haven't mentioned Kadeem Allen, too, the National Junior College Player of the Year. He chose to redshirt this year. He'll have two years starting next year. Kadeem Allen, keep your finger on that pulse. Beautiful drive, Marcel. Dante Williams has his three-pointer blocked. Here come the Cats and Stanley Johnson. Gabe York's defensive prowess, inspiring. They're just backing off Stanley Johnson. And he'll take the three and it rattles off and the rebound controlled by Darius Hamilton for the Wolverines. Stanley Johnson, the most valuable player of that under-18 world championship. There's a steal by Jackson Cartwright. And he lays it in. 12 in a row for Arizona. Keep your poise if you're Utah Valley. Don't get rattled a possession at a time. Try to get the ball to Zach Nelson. Create some easy opportunity for good looks. When the ball comes to a dead stop, it makes it impossible to beat this defense. Deflected out, stays with Utah Valley. As McConnell comes back in, so does Hollis Jefferson. Jackson Cartwright here. The ability to just pop that ball away and extend. So even though the bigger, more athletic player from Utah Valley, he has no chance to get back in there. Jackson Cartwright spends a lot of time with David Stoudemire. Good guy to learn from. Very good guy. And Victor with the block shot. Five on the timer for Utah Valley. Too many of the Utah Valley Wolverines are playing like A.C. Green. You're old enough to remember him, Yes, right? I do remember. Former Oregon State star and, of course, in the NBA. A.C. Green, no matter what, every time he got the ball, beautiful Mitch execution. Mitch Bernil to lay in. <laughs> Sean Miller's seen enough. We're not getting backdoored on the baseline out of bounds, please. 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 And he's taking his full timeout here with 9.31 to go in the first half. 26-18, Arizona. Timeout like this, Bill. Sean's got a message to get across. On the right side of the screen, he comes and gets green there. Arizona worked on defending this play ad nauseum this morning at practice. And here they get burned on it the very first time. Here's the Utah Valley story. Orem, Utah. The Olympian, Noel Pikus Pace, part of their athletic alumni. Over 30,000 students, and you alluded to this, it's the second big, biggest public university in the state of Utah. 19 fewer students than the University of Utah has, which is up in the hill above Salt Lake yeah. City. But this is, Utah Valley is on the same street that BYU is just two and a half miles away. Now, BYU's been there forever. Utah Valley is a relatively new school. 12 years ago, they were still a junior college. But they predict that Utah Valley University will be one day a 45,000 student university. And here they're getting stuff done on the basketball court. But when you drive up I-15 on your way from Las Vegas. I will pass right by Utah Valley tomorrow. You're driving? I'm going to drive from, from Salt Lake City. No, I'm flying from Tucson. <laughs> but then I'll drive from Salt Lake City I was gonna to say, Provo tomorrow. You've heard of airplanes, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. I Believe me, you said I you know airplanes all too well. You said you don't get out much. <laughs> you never know. I, I, I don't get out of the United States much. How's that? I didn't finish the Bob Dylan story. Yes. One of the songs reportedly on this new album, The okay. Shadows of the Night, Stay With Me, which Bob brought out. Oh, beautiful stroke. Brandon Ashley. A three for Ashley. He had, in the first six games of the year, did not have a made three. Hit two in the first half against Gonzaga here on Saturday and strokes that one home to put Arizona up 11. When I look at all these Arizona players, Brandon Ashley has the most upside. And the, the size, the strength, the length, the athleticism. Long the two skill, missed by Zach Nelson. He just needs to get that sense of confidence, the rhythm, the assertiveness that comes with the mental training and a lifetime of experience. 
Both York and McConnell were there, and it deflects out. It belongs to Utah Valley, but here's the stroke by Ashley. Out of the timeout. He just gets it. They back way, way off. That's his game. And he, he's not a back-to-the-basket, one-on-one, put-it-on-the-ground type of player. No, no. He just likes to stand there and stroke it easily, effortlessly, as it happened right there. His length and athleticism makes him so tough to go up against. Dave York's defensive pressure denying all penetration. Marcel Davis on the drive. It's a foul against Arizona. So stay with me. I'm still trying yes. to get this song. Because Bob, 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 Bob broke it down in Los Angeles on the Never Ending World Tour and then continued it up in Oakland. Incredible. If you get a chance, check it out. Bob Dylan singing, stay with me. Foul against Arizona. It's Gabe York, his first. And that puts... Utah Valley at the line, the and Dante Williams. Williams. His first personal 16 foul. If you're Arizona, okay. every the line for Utah Valley, conscious three, breathing Dante moment Williams. has to be your mindset, if you're the player, has to be Kentucky, Duke, and Texas. That's where the challenge is going to come from. That's where their successful season will be determined. First free throw of the night for Utah Valley. What? Well, this the first shot, that's the first one they've shot. Almost the 12 first minutes time in. they got to the line? I love the refs. Oh, my gosh. But all these other schools that Arizona's going to play, including the conference schools, they don't have the talent, the capability, the, the program right now. In Arizona, they got to look at what Kentucky, Duke, and Texas is doing every single day because it's going to come down to just a couple of days in late March and early April as to whether this season is ultimately a success or a huge disappointment as last year final collapse there oh that's got to be a foul please and it is Sarzuski to line up a nice feed from Stanley Johnson Arizona has gone up nine now in Utah Valley 7.59 remaining first half in Tucson Number three, Arizona leads Utah Valley 29-20, and I'll beat you to it, Bill. Yes, I am old enough to remember Lute Olson. And his angelic wife, Kelly, oh, who means so much to not only Lute, but to all of us in the Arizona community here. Now, the mantle has been passed to Sean Miller, who has really taken over what's going on here. The five-star recruits over the last five years. Kentucky leads the class with 16. Arizona in second. Duke, those are all Nike schools at the top. Never underestimate the import and the value that Nike brings to a program. Kentucky, Arizona, and Duke at the top, followed by Kansas. UCLA at the bottom of that list, North Carolina, and that is a who's who of the history of college basketball. And who would have ever thought that Arizona would be in there, and it would not have happened without Lou Olson, the man who brought water to the desert. And now Sean Miller just carrying on, just absolutely incredible. And what Lou Olson's pr protege, Steve Kerr, is doing up in Golden State at the professional level, 18-2, and two, the best team in the NBA, the most exciting team, the most fun team to watch. They're playing Lute Olson basketball. Thank you, Coach Olson. And he has a great assistant coach by the name of Walton on his staff, too, I think. It might I'm have a, a big influence on that also, right? I'm a very proud dad. But just look at Steve and Luke. First of all, Steve and his wife just gave a million dollars to the rehabilitation of this building. The overall campaign is just magnificently beautiful in here with the new locker room. But then Steve Kerr, Luke Walton, both played for Lute Olson. Both played for Phil Jackson, and now they've taken that to Golden State in conjunction with Jerry West, Joe Lakov, Peter Goober, Rick Welts, Bob, Bob Myers. Myers. I mean, they've got it all going. Incredible fans up there. It's all happening. We couldn't be more excited as to what's going on in the Bay Area. You well, live there, right? I do. I do. And I'm, a, I'm a big Warrior fan, though. How could you not be? Great defense that time. That's a foul on... Brandon Ashley, who just throws Belongs Boston. to Utah Valley. The See, there's NBA the wall champions. of NBA champ. Look, Who's that guy in the middle right there? That is Luke Walton. Okay. And I'm a very proud and very lucky dad. And I got to speak with Luke today. I was chatting with Gabe York. Luke and Gabe are very close. Uh -huh. and, but Gabe was complaining today that Luke has not returned his texts. 
I was telling Gabe that don't worry. So he Gabe, told you. You're not alone. So I so I texted Luke. Mitch Bruniel missing on his way to the basket. And Tarzuski cleans it up. Excellent out pass. Ignite the fast break. Throw one down, Stanley. And a foul and a block is called against Utah Valley and Stanley Johnson to the line. Second foul on Chad Ross. You're always amazed at these young players coming up. I mean, how old is Stanley Johnson? 18? He just played in the 18 and under championship up there. And built like a tank. 6'7", 245. What a body. What strength. I mean, he just looks so powerful. Did you look like that when you were 18? I look never looked like that. <laughs> and you know what, Bill? I'm never going to look like that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll ask your wife. <laughs> so on this team, which was coached by Billy Donovan, Ed Cooley of Providence, and then Sean Miller here at Arizona, but they had Tyus Jones, the star point guard for Duke. They had Miles Turner, the hugely impressive star from Texas. And then Justice Winslow, also the nice swing man from Duke as well. So a lot of talent, but Stanley Johnson, he walked away with the MVP. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats. They've led by as many as 11 here in the first half. Arizona's won 26 straight here at McHale Center. As the pull-up by Chad Ross and the long two is stroked by the senior. Beautiful execution, the footwork, the jab in your face, cross over and get right in the lane. Chad Ross, who spent some time at South Georgia State before coming out here. Alley oop to Caleb Tarsuski. Tarzuski and McConnell have to be more consistent on the offensive end for this squad to play with Kentucky, Duke, and Texas. Marcel Davis just avoided the backcourt violation is Dante Williams. But the discipline and the patience of the defense for the Wildcats is too, too superior. Stays with the Wolverines, eight on the shot clock. Tarzuski calling for it, pointing to the basket, saying, hey, come on, I'm wide open, just get it up there. How long do I have to wait? So patient, so determined, so deliberate. Caleb Tarzuski, top student athlete on the squad here, just got moved into the business school here. Just uh, the epitome of what it means to be a student athlete in the Pac-12. There's 7,000 student athletes. Shot missed by Darius Hamilton. Here come the Cats. In this conference of champions. Arizona has 30 of those conference championships. Elliott Pitts in the basket is fouled by Hamilton. That's three now on Hamilton. There's still 538 left in the half. Uh, Arizona also has 27 All-Americans in their program's storied history. But to watch the development of this young Elliott Pitts, whose parents met in college playing basketball at Northwood, which is a college in Michigan. His mom's in that basketball Hall of Fame five, back there. Johnson. And to see his growth. Elliot Pitts from Dublin there in the East Bay. Went to De La Salle High School which has produced the Berry Boys. How exciting. Joe McLean, a former Arizona star. Elliot Pitts gets one out of two. Former UCLA captain Sean Farnham. There are a number of Players out of De La Salle have gone on to great success. Sean Farnham. Did Neil Robertson, the former Cal star. Sean, is he, is he still broadcasting? He is. There's a travel call, and Chad Ross with a turnover. 11-point lead for Arizona. How about the fact that the Pac-12 gets eight bowl teams in the football, in the sport of football? How about Arizona going to the Fiesta Bowl? Rich Rod and... First time in 20 years to go to the Fiesta Bowl. That'll be just absolutely fantastic, and they're... Great defensive linebacker there. Scooby Wright the third gets defensive player of the year last night in Charlotte. The Bronco Nagurski trophy. You old enough to remember Bronco? I am not. I I, I never saw him play, but I read about him. Bronco? Course. Incredible. So tough, so fierce. Also a professional wrestler there. Bronco Bronco died 24 years ago when he was 81. Oh, but what a player. What? Yeah, I mean, just so fierce and so tough. And that's well why, on Dusan Ristich. That's why he gets the Defensive Player of the Year the award the named after him. The Chad same way Ross. that Bear Haskins gets the WAC Coaches of the Year award named after him. Did you see Glory Road? I did see the movie. Excellent. Outstanding movie. 
Big and the Daddy free throw missed by Chad Ross. Big Daddy D. David. In, in those days, it was Latin. He changed it to Latin. Did he really? Yeah, he lives in Houston now. I see him all the time when I go down to Houston. Excellent. You played against him? No. No? He's really old. <laughs> and it's hard to be alive and be older than me, but Big Daddy D is older. Ristich in the lane. Dusan Ristich on the baseline. 37-24, Arizona. So he was playing, Ristich was playing on a club team, whether he was a professional, but, but told him to keep the money. I want to go to college in the United States. He didn't know where to go. But one of his teammates on the Red Star team there in Serbia had played here. Ivan Radmanovic or something Ivan like that. Ivan Radenovic. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ristic also played for the Serbian Junior National Team. He knew Krasimir Kosic, the wax star up at BYU. And a foul called against Arizona. And it's against Ristic's second. Ristic along the baseline. His favorite player of all time, Pau Gasol. That had a little Pau Gasol to him right there. When Pau Gasol is your hero, you're on the right track in life. So I told Corey Walton, who's not my dad, the Corey Walton, who's the SID here at Arizona, yes. I told him to no get... No relation. No, not, not related. Uh, but he reached out. I, I told him to reach out to Luke and have Luke connect Ristich with Pau Gasol, now starring for the Chicago Bulls. One more for Marcel Davis. Three of three at the line. And now six points for the junior from American Fork, Utah who transferred school to be close to his younger brother who's got some very severe medical challenges in life and so American Fort is just six miles from Orange, Utah where the college is and Marcel can take care of his younger brother. Pass deflected out, last touch by Ristich, it belongs to Utah Valley. Wallace Jefferson can't figure it out but who needs to? You got a nice comfortable lead, it's a beautiful night in the desert, let's go. For three, Arizona leading Utah Valley, 37-26, 3.48 remaining first half. Coming up at the half, our State Farm Halftime Report with Jill Savage back in our Pac-12 Network Studios. A preview of the big game tomorrow night in Provo. Number 13, Utah against BYU. Plus the sports report update and first half highlights and stats. It's all coming up with Jill Savage at the half here on Pac-12 Networks. A good look at Ben Arid, recently graduated from Bountiful, Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. He's the third all-time scorer and number one rebounder. Right now he's got a broken foot. He was going to play professionally over in the Netherlands. Got over there. The foot wasn't just right, so they had to come back over here and do some surgery, take some of the loose pieces out. We're hoping that he's going to be fine because that guy's a real stud and a star. He could be used here tonight as right now Arizona is in control. Ben Arid. Foul on Dante Williams. Offensive foul. He shoved Jackson Cartwright down. First on Dante Williams. Arizona working on an 11-point lead here. Final three and a half minutes of the first half. But leadership will be a problem for Utah Valley. You, you know, you lose Colton Hunsaker, the four-year starter, second leading scorer ever for the school. And then Ben Arid, the third leading scorer ever. Oh, beautiful tip. Rondé Hollis Jefferson off the miss from York. Hollis Jefferson spent the entire summer here with the exception of when he went up to Las Vegas to be part of the LeBron camp. And then he went to D.C. to be part of the Kevin Durant camp. The rest of the time he was here pumping iron, working on his jumper. This guy's got it. I mean, everything. Getting his hair cut? Well, <laughs> I'm the last guy to say anything about anybody's hair. But this guy, his level of commitment to the team, his willingness to sacrifice, or just packing it in zone defense. Why, this one you got to get into the seam, draw the defense, and throw it over the top. Jump ball. Jump ball. Arrow points toward Arizona, 22 on the shot clock. Third foul, by the way, and Boston Goobler, so he has three, and Darius Hamilton has three, so some foul difficulty for Utah Valley. But how great for these young players, like a Hollis Jefferson, to be able to go and play and spend time with LeBron James and Kevin Durant, just an epitome of class and dignity. It's the new generation of what David Robinson led the NBA in. When you were playing, did you go back and did you play with the college guys and you try to help their games develop? 
Coach Wooden, he didn't want his players playing in the summertime. He wanted the summer off, do some training. I was in the hospital. You know, I, I've had 37 orthopedic operations. I, I spent half my life in the hospital. Half my adult life. But you're doing great now. Doing fantastic. Got a new spine, got a new knee. I'm ready to go. Put me in, Coach. Zone defense here for Utah Valley. Well, don't tell Dick Hunsecker that because he might actually come over and put you in. <laughs> Foul difficulty Utah Valley has. Down 13 here. Roxy, I haven't been able to play basketball in 29 years. Here's Mitch Bruniel. The inability to get the ball to Zach Nelson down low. Beautiful tip by Nelson that time. Bruniel keeps it alive. Marcel Davis missing a three, and Hollis Jefferson skies for the rebound. The power and the strength of Jefferson, Victor Tarzewski over the top. Great recovery that time by Utah Valley. And the Wolverines attack. Jaden Jackson can't cash in. Here comes Arizona. And a timeout taken before Arizona moved in toward the basket. And it's a 30-second timeout for Sean Miller, 141 left in the half. Play was getting very ragged there. You, you saw that, go, that little guy, Parker, Jackson Cartwright. No, he grows up in L.A. there, right? He's, he's from the Valley. Right. And San Fernando Valley. And Went to Sierra Canyon High School. All right, so his favorite player ever, Steve Nash. So some family friends take him to a Phoenix Sun game when Steve is on top of the basketball world. And they sit courtside, and they get to watch Steve Nash. And here's Parker in the eighth grade watching yeah, this watch happen. Nash put on a clinic. Put on a clinic. And then at halftime, Steve came over and said hi and said hello to little Parker Jackson Cartwright. Now that's a class act, Steve Nash. Coming up at the half on the State Farm Halftime Report with Jill Savage. Preview the big matchup at the Marriott Center tomorrow night as Utah visits BYU. Sports report update as well as first half highlights and stats. For this one is number three, Arizona. Is Utah Valley along with Bill Walton, our great Pac-12 Networks crew. I'm Roxy Bernstein from the Kale Center in Tucson as Gabe York missing a three out of bounds to Utah Valley. So how cool is it? You have Parker Jackson Cartwright. His favorite player is Steve Nash. You have Tucson Ristich. His favorite player is Pau Gasol. I mean, those are two of my favorite players ever, Pau and Steve. And that's almost enough to make you believe in evolution again. <laughs> and that we do have almost a chance. Enough? And that we do have a chance to make it. There's a foul. And it's on Gabe York, his second, Utah Valley to the line with 116 left in the half. But then when you open up the newspaper and you see that they want to take away the school lunch program and take away the regulations about clean water, you say, what? What kind of foundation are we building for our future? Oh, my gosh. Marcel Davis now 5 of 5 at the line. He's, he, Marcel Davis not thinking about that. He's thinking about his free throws right now. That's a good thing. Focus, concentration, discipline. How about how nice this new building is? It's great, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Wonderful job to Greg Byrne, the athletic director here at Arizona. Their staff did. They added 500 seats. The new locker rooms. Oh, my gosh. And all of this is comes back to Larry Scott and what he's been able to do to bring the, the, the resources, the treasures. And the rebound, Utah Valley claims it. Space the floor. Dante Williams. Patience. The closeout defense. Stanley Johnson done doing so much. Arizona very much like San Diego State. They defend without fouling. The runner blocked by Tarzuski as Brendan Evans is rejected. Keeps it in play. A nice pace by... Jackson Cartwright. Arizona can play for the final shot of the half. I mean, here's a guy, Parker Jackson Cartwright, that's got three legend names from the NBA. Tony Parker, Phil Jackson, Bill Cartwright, all in the same name. That guy's a lucky dude. There he is down the lane. The kick, Elliott Pitts from the corner. Three! And with T.J. McConnell on the bench with fouls, 
Great signs for the future for Sean Miller and his Wildcats in the Pac-12. Second three for Elliott Pitts and a good way to close out the half. Penetration and dish. Both of Elliott Pitts' baskets have come by setup plays by Parker Jackson Cartwright. That guy is a true giant. So at the half, it's number three, Arizona 42, Utah Valley 28. Stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report coming up after the break. Pac-12 basketball presented by Domino's from Tucson, Arizona. McHale Center, number three, Arizona, 42. Utah Valley 28 getting ready to start the second half along with Bill Walton. And a great Pac-12 never true Roxy Bernstein with you. Speaking of the Pac-12, how about the fact that Washington and California in the top 25. Congratulations to Lorenzo Romar and that game Sunday night where Washington took down number 13 San Diego State, held them to 36 points. That is tremendous accomplishment there by the Washington Huskies. Glad to see them back in the mix. Cal with Quanzo Martin getting the job done there. It's going to be a great year of Pac-12 basketball. Utah Valley attacks and we're going the other way. Dante Williams called for the charge 11 seconds into the yeah, second and, half. And Dick Hussanker can only say, hey, why doesn't that call get made in both directions? Arizona with the ball. Yeah, Washington, they're really good defensively, Bill, when you get a chance to see them. Look at this, the fans are standing up again. Same deal. Until Utah oh. Valley scores, they're going to stand. Does that happen in the overtime too, or? Well, uh, the overtime here, here on Saturday, everybody was standing. Nobody sat down. The entire time. The entire time. Foul against Utah Valley. How's Dan Dakich doing? Dan Dakich was doing Dakich, great. Dakich, Dakich, I, I can't figure out. He had fun coming out here for that game. Gabe York gets the roll. First points of the night for the junior from West Covina. Largest lead for the Wildcats. I'm wondering when this Arizona first unit is going to get any sort of offensive rhythm on a consistent basis where they just come out and every single possession, they're a beautiful execution. And it goes for Marcel Davis, Marcel has had Davis. a nice night. Ten points for the junior. There's a three missed by York. Stanley Johnson rips the rebound away. They had a nice little tribute on the halftime uh, scoreboard about Stanley Johnson. A lot of interesting stuff about him. Here he is. And he nails the three. Stroke it, Stanley. Now, he was most fortunate to have an incredible high school coach in Gary McKnight over there at Modern Day, who has developed so many top talents. Out in transition, and all Utah Valley can do his foul. Number two, Marcel Davis. His second, second foul, foul of Marcel Davis. Davis. Utah Valley, because of their short stature in terms of size and physical prowess, they have to pack it in the paint and hope that Arizona will miss those perimeter jumpers. When you got a nice rhythm and stroke like Stanley Johnson, Brandon Ashley, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, what are you going to do? Here is Brandon Ashley. Lost it. Picked up by Marcel Davis. Here come the Wolverines. Jaden Jackson a three. Marzuski. And Stanley Johnson comes away with it. Marzuski just roaming the defensive backboard. Nice pass. Find that shooter. TJ McConnell missing. That's a shot they're going to need him to knock down, those open shots. I think it's a mindset for TJ McConnell, who, like Steve Nash, comes out thinking pass first. But the great offensive forces and players in the history of this game, they, you have to think shot first. A legal screen. Offensive foul. That's offensive four foul on Brendan Evans. Brendan Evans for the Wolverines, his fourth personal fourth team. So foul. Evans with four and still 17-49 remaining. Brandon Evans from Sonora, California. You ever been on Highway 4 over the Sierra there? I have. Up above Angels Camp? Yes. Oh, my gosh. The death ride, the three passes up there. You ride your bike in July. Oh, my gosh. That is a tough one. I love my bike. And if it's a beautiful trail, you're going to find it. Stanley Johnson left the ball behind. Here comes Mitch Bruniel. Space the floor here. And a foul called. The third against McConnell. 
And Bernil will go to the line. That was on the line against number four, T.J. McConnell. His so Utah, which foul, has a great basketball foul. tradition and yes. so many fantastic yeah, players that come through the Western Athletic foul. Conference, Bernil going to the line here. Are you old enough to remember uh, Fred Roberts? You played with Fred Roberts in Boston. So Fred Roberts was on the Utah Jazz, and the Celtics wanted him to back up Larry Bird because Scott Wedman was injured. So Boston wasn't going to give up anything to Utah, which was a struggling franchise at the time and was having trouble selling tickets. And so Fred Roberts was traded to the Boston Celtics for an exhibition game where the Celtics promised to come out and play an exhibition really? game. Really? He was traded for an exhibition game? For an game. exhibition game. <laughs> because the Utah Jazz, they wanted Larry Bird to come out there and play and sell some tickets out there. And we never let Fred forget about that. Of course, he had a great career at BYU. Oh, one of the all-time whack players, including Danny Ainge, and Jimmy Collins, New Mexico State, Sam Lacey, recently deceased, so very sad. New Mexico State the standard bearer right now in the WAC. They, they were always up there challenging UCLA. They could never get past UCLA in the 60s. Dave York buries a three. First three-pointer for York tonight. The Arizona lead is 20. Inside 17 minutes to play. Poise, confidence, competitive greatness for Utah Valley. Can they find it? Can they sustain it? And then they can, can they create any sort of offensive shot opportunities. Great hustle by McConnell. Finds Gabe York. Hashtag it. 12 best right there. Dick Hunsaker needs a timeout. What hustle by McConnell. So Marcel Davis. He just lets this ball go, not sure what he's doing. The dive on the floor, throw it ahead, and then throw it down one time, Gabe York. Mother Deborah so very, very proud over at West Covina. 8-0 run for the Wildcats. The number three team in the land has opened up a 22-point lead on Utah Valley. And here's the hustle determination by T.J. McConnell. Sean Miller, who's been searching for a way to replace the intangibles that Nick Johnson brought to this team, may have found something right here. The peer pressure of the second unit that did so well in the first half these starters got to wake up and say, hey, look, our standard is Kentucky. Our standard is Duke. And we got to get out there and we got to start playing every single day. That was Sean Miller's message today, to not let Utah Valley become the New Jersey Institute of Technology that goes into Michigan the other day and beats them in the closing seconds. They can't get the ball over the half-court line. They just do beat the 10-second count. Yes, we did put the hashtag 12 best in that last play. You can tune to the Pac-12 Sports Report every Monday. Throw it down, Gabe. Yeah, one time. To the 12 best plays of the week. J.B. Long and Ashley Adamson. <laughs> Trying to loft it toward Tarzuski, who was tied up out of bounds to Utah Valley. Great defensive rotation by Mitch Bruniel that time. I want to know what Sean Miller means. I want to know what he watches. The fat guy walked into this building you know, at 145 sharp when practice was closed up. He walked in and that guy was ready. And for the next hour and 15 minutes, he just drove it on every single aspect of not only basketball, but life. And what an inspirational leader. He just, he just radiates energy, radiates spectacular enthusiasm and you, it's just so infectious and that's why all, all these people come that's why all these players come here I mean, just so contagious well coming off the huge win against Gonzaga on Saturday he was worried about maybe a letdown with Michigan looming on Saturday they came out a little slow which you alluded to but they've really taken it up a notch here Actually, I don't know if that's a huge win I mean it's a win that's a big win you beat Gonzaga when you win at home, you have to go. You have to come from behind and have the other team collapse, and then barely win in overtime. That's not a huge. Well, win. I don't know if the That's other team collapsed. They, they collapsed. Arizona Gonzaga. defensively, Bill. They took it to them. They really you got were, Gonzaga were, out of their comfort zone of what they wanted to do. You were here. You I watched, watched it here. on TV. I watched it. On you TV. watched on TV. I, I was, was here. here. Okay, so right you here were, where I'm sitting right now. Okay, so I'm gonna defer to you. <laughs> you can say it's a great win. 
When you're ranked higher and you barely escape with your life against a team that shouldn't be able to play with you on your home court, I'm not, sure. I'm not calling that a great victory. I, I am because that's an outstanding basketball team they beat. Okay. Ranked six spots lower. Ashley to the basket and one. The block called on Boston Goobler his fourth. Boston Goobler just back from his Mormon mission where he spent a couple of years in Chile. He's only been back on the squad in three months, getting called for the foul here. Pac-12 Basketball is brought to you by Panera Bread. And now order online for rapid pickup at PaneraBread.com. Number three, Arizona 54, Utah Valley 30. A 24-point lead for the Cats, who on a 10-0 run right now, fueled by T.J. McConnell. And Brandon Ashley. Brandon Ashley, one of three starting front court players for Sean Miller and the Wildcats. Not a one of those guys. Johnson, Ashley, Tarzuski has been whistled for a foul in this game. That is domination. Utah Valley has been called for 21 already tonight, which ties a season high. So the next foul they commit will establish a new season high. 16 fouls against the Wolverines here in the second half, only one against Arizona. Elliott Pitts, Dusan Ristich in the game. There's Mitch Bruniel missing. And there is T.J. McConnell on the defensive glass. Their Utah Valley is not getting good shots. The shots that they do take are not going down. They give a lot of credit to the defense for Arizona. But still, the, the ability to create offense. And that's where championships are won. And that, when you look back at last year's disappointing, heartbreaking loss in the regional final at Anaheim to Wisconsin, and the big game, and so many players did not play well. And that's how you win big games, is when your best players play great. T.J. McConnell out in transition. Oh, Jesus. Oh, pretty reverse by McConnell. <laughs> the steal and bucket by the senior. Gonna have to hashtag 12 best that one, too. That was a brilliant play. Hashtag 12, that's the, is, hashtag is that Hashtag 12 best. Hashtag You're on Twitter. Hashtag 12 best. That's the, that's the handle? That's the handle for a play like that. I'm going to put that handle on there. Hashtag 12 best. Okay. He's been involved in the two tonight. So that play is a 12 best nominee. Tune into the Pac-12 Sports Report to see the top 12 plays of the week in the countdown. Visions of Dr. J along the baseline against Kareem. But the relationship between T.J. McConnell and Parker Jackson Cartwright is, is critical. Shot missed by Chad Ross. T.J.'s a senior. And he'll be graduating. There's a foul on Jaden Jackson of Utah Valley, his first. And again, that now is a new season high in fouls for Utah Valley. They've committed 22. We saw 14 18 to play. Number 23, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Rondé Hollis Jefferson from Chester, Pennsylvania, or New Jersey, or one of those places. Yes. Pennsylvania. Delaware. I don't know. It's kind of close. All comes together, close to right? the, you know, Delaware is the first state. You know that. No, no, California. Okay. <laughs> the first state of the Union was Delaware. And the oh, you mean like historically? Historically. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant like cool places. Well, no, to be. I'm with you on cool places to be. You and I both live in California. <laughs> yeah, along with at least 40 million more. How can you tell? It's only, what, there's less than 3 million in the entire state of Utah? And a foul committed by Utah Valley. They keep mounting for the Wolverines. That's what's it's it's so fantastic about what these coaches up in Utah are able to do because there's six Division I programs in Utah and five different conferences and so many different styles and atmospheres and cultures but just between utah state weber state utah byu southern utah and now utah valley coming alive bruniel fouled by ristich third against dusan ristich yeah there's a lot of good basketball played in the state of utah it's not just BYU and Utah, but Utah State's Stu Moral's done a great job up there with that program. 
Weber State that won the Big Sky last year. Randy Ray, the coach there at Weber State, who lost to Arizona in the NCAA tournament last year. And Dick Hunsecker's Utah Valley Wolverines were the WAC regular season champs last year. Nobody's doing better than the guy at the line right now, Mitch Bruniel, who, after going to, from Boise, but then he goes to Southern Idaho College, where they're the champs, national champs. He then transfers to Utah State. Then he gets married to Kylie, who's Miss Utah. Excuse me, Miss Idaho. Miss Idaho, Kylie. I'm very sorry, Kylie. We're going to just call him the ultimate winner. That is a good day at the there office. There you go. Well, T.J. McConnell tonight, Bill, he has really been superb at running this team. He's fun to, fun to play with. He's fun to watch. He's fun to work with cover here his ability is totally unselfish i'd like to see him be a little bit more assertive he's always setting guys up willing to get out in the passing lane willing to get down on the floor willing to take a chance offensively and the perfect point guard for sean miller six points three assists tonight for mcconnell a couple of steals and the extension of the coach on the floor of the point guard. Bruniel misses again in the rebound pits. But you have to have that with all of your players. Stanley Johnson charge, offensive foul. His offensive first. foul called on the Wildcats number five, Stanley Johnson. His first personal Stanley Johnson, foul the youngest of five children. Returning for the Wildcats number one, eight yards. That's for number five, Stanley Johnson. Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State, which is in Mississippi. No, Alabama. Somewhere down there. In the southeast. It's in Alabama. It's not in the Pac-12. No, that's not. The Conference of Champions. And now, fantastic arenas. What they've done at Pauley Pavilion, what they've done here. What they're doing up in Utah. Have a Matthew Knight Arena at oh, Oregon. That is a super platinum standard. Another steal for McConnell. Gabe York is open. Three for Gabe York. The best pure shooter on this Arizona team, Gabe York, with the most natural stroke. Arizona's made their last five shots on a 16-0 run to go up 30. You know whose stroke is coming, though? It's Hollis Jefferson's. He's worked, he works hard at it. And he spent all summer here working with Chris Rounds. And never underestimate the value of what Chris Rounds means to this program here, the strength and conditioning coach. Spins out from Jaden Jackson. And here come the Cats again. Jefferson in transition right now. <laughs> Slip lost his footing there. But that's what's great about basketball. You just come out and try a play like that after spending the summer with LeBron and KD. <laughs> come out here, put on a little show. It doesn't work. Get it back on the defensive end and just keep going. Sweeping hook, no good from <laughs> Darius Hamilton. And get all the rebounds. And Hollis Jefferson just up and down. The, the level of physical fitness of these guys. Elliott Pitts is open. Ristich on the offensive glass. Count it. Plus one. Dusan Ristich. This is a very nice player, and he is going to mean so much. Plus, he's going to put pressure on Ashley, Tarzuski, Stanley Johnson. Diamond in for the Wildcats, number 21, Brandon Ashley for number 23, Rante Hollis Jefferson. So Ristich at the line. Career high tying seven points Almost now for the freshman. He had seven against Parker Missouri Jackson over in Maui. Number four, TJ McConnell. Ten months ago, Dusan Ristich did not speak a word of English. Not a word. And now he just speaks a heck of a lot better than I do. <laughs> English is my fifth language. What are the other four? Stammering, stumbling, spitting, and stuttering. <laughs> Well, Utah Valley has had a rough second half. One of seven for the field. Just two points. They've missed all four of their free throws. After a solid first half performance, they got off to a good start. As Nelson hits a three from the corner. Zach Nelson. Just five points tonight for Zach Nelson. So Zach Nelson, who's from Yuba City, California. Have you been there? I have been there, right near Sacramento. Very nice. So he grows up in the glory days of the Sacramento Kings. And so he got to see 
the Chris Webbers, the Vladi Dinos, the Pages Chariotovic. Oh my God, he seemed the best of the best. As we're witnessing tonight. Mikhail Center in Tucson, where Arizona has been dominant. 26 consecutive home wins coming into tonight. And a suffocating performance tonight. State Farm get to a better state game summary. Stanley Johns with nine points, but the turnovers leading to Arizona points tonight, a big difference. And that's the defense and the superiority, the physical prowess that Arizona has. 26, what, 26 home wins? 26 straight. What's the all-time record? A lot more than 26 straight. Who has it? I'm going to guess, since you're asking me, UCLA. No. Kentucky. Kent oh, that's right. And I believe it may be 129. York, one out of two. Into the ball against number five, Stanley Johnson for number one, Dean York. Well, Arizona, 26 straight. Since you put me, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Do you know who has the second longest streak going in the Pac-12 for consecutive home runs? I have no idea. Take a guess. Berkeley. It's not Cal. It is Arizona State. Really? At what number? 13. Ristich the rebound underneath for Arizona. I love, the, I love watching little Parker Jackson Cartwright. He's going to be a good player here. He's got two syllables in each of three names. <laughs> that is just a, a nightmare for a stutterer. Beautiful pass, Stanley Johnson. Ristich the reverse lay-in. So Ristich grows up watching Vlade, watching Peja Stojakovic. Now Vlade is now the head of all Olympic sports in Serbia. That was a little Vlade move right there along the baseline. Vlade underneath. could sit really pass that ball. Then he had guys you could catch. Chris Weber. Oh, my gosh. Mike Bibby. That was a team. Peja Stojakovic. Peter Turkoglu was on those Sacramento teams. Beautiful. And a foul against Alex Carr. This is my first time seeing these freshmen, Johnson and Car Jackson Cartwright, play. <laughs> They're for real. At the line, shooting two for the Wildcats, number zero. So Jackson Cartwright to the line. You're impressed by Arizona. Yes, I am. But I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to call it a, a great win over Gonzaga. I mean, you're supposed to win at home. We we can agree to disagree. It's okay to disagree. Just don't be disagreeable. Whenever <laughs> when everybody thinks alike, nobody thinks. But eight steals, six blocks tonight for the Wildcats. Parker, One out of two for Jackson Cartwright. Parker Jackson Cartwright started playing basketball when he was two years old. I'm wondering, if, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if he was that size at two years old. Did you ask him if he remembered playing basketball when he was two years old? No, he told me. I mean, I, two years old, I don't. I'm not sure what I was doing. How old were you when you started? Eight. You were eight? Yes. But your parents weren't into sports. So well, how did you get into basketball? My parents have no interest in sports, either as participants or spectators. But they're the greatest parents in the world, in the history of the world. Elliot Pitts has his shot blocked. Whoa. Nice job by Zach Nelson. Yeah, what, taking three guys out? <laughs> he blocked the <laughs> shot. That's all that matters. No foul was called. <laughs> Speaking of foul, Stanley Johnson gets whistled right there. That was on the wild hits, number five, Stanley Johnson. So how did you start playing basketball? Foul, fourth team foul. And now a technical has been called against Brandon Ashley of Arizona. I had an incredible coach, Rocky. He changed my life. Rocky, like me, grew up in San Diego. Uh-huh. Rocky, like me, went to a public high school. He went to Sweetwater. I went to Helix. But Rocky, when he graduated from Helix High School, I mean from Sweetwater, deciding what to do with the rest of his life, I'm going to become a fireman. So he's the fireman down the street from our school. My mom's the librarian down the other street from the school. And Rocky, who had three children of his own, realized that, hey, at 3 o'clock when school's out, there's nothing to do for any of these children. So in 1956, as a volunteer, 
he started the athletic program at our school. In 1960, four years after Rocky started, I started playing for Rocky. Rocky coached every grade, every level, every sport all year round. Today in 2014, 58 years after Rocky started, as a volunteer, never taking a dime, he's still there every day. Every day. Still there. Never took a dime. He's the richest guy I know. The impact that he has had. And he was the one that got you started when you were eight. I cannot say today whether Rocky knows anything about sports <laughs> or basketball, but he sure knows life. And when I saw Sean Miller walk in today, that's what I saw. I saw my first coach who made it so fun. We could not wait to get to practice every single day. The value of that coach, and that's right, the value of positive leadership. And when we talked about those legends earlier on from the WAC, Haskins, Stan Watts, Jack Gardner, Jerry Tarkanian, every one of them in the Hall of Fame, what they have done to shape the Western United States, the culture that we have, and we're seeing it right now. A technical foul here from across the court. And now Mark Whitehead calls one on Sean Miller. Brandon Ashley just picked one up. Oh. And now Arizona head coach Sean Miller. This is a 30-point game. Come on. I don't get this at all. And Sean Miller beside himself and was made from across the court. And Lute Olsen just say, yep, I used to get a few of those too back in my day. I, I got two technicals in, two? My, in my career. Your entire career, both at UCLA and the pros. Yeah. Here's Sean yeah. Miller getting the technical right there. I didn't get any in college. Ignore the refs. I mean, it's, you have to have them. So he was upset about the technical whistled against Ashley. And Sean Miller voicing his frustration toward Mark Whitehead. But you got two in the pros, but never got one at UCLA. What, what would John Wooden have done if you'd gotten a technical when you were playing for him at UCLA? Well, uh, he would have said, uh, Bill, we've enjoyed having you here, but we're going to miss you. <laughs> well, that's what he always said. That ball almost went in. It wasn't and Johnson gets it back. Hashtag Pac-12. 12, 12 best. Hollis Jefferson with a slam. This is a clinic. 68-39 Wildcats. And I love how little Parker Jefferson is up there. Or Jackson. Parker Jackson Cartwright. Okay. I'm trying to get that. That is a mouthful. It is. Well, you mentioned the syllables in the three names. There's a three. Knocked down the second Zach triple Nelson. for Zach Nelson. He has eight points tonight. Over the top, Tarzewski, nothing there. Eli Robison checked in a sophomore for Provo, Utah. Speaking of Provo, big game tomorrow night. It is, Larry Kostowiak running Utes. Danny Ainge will be there. Who's the greatest player in the history of the WAC? Greatest player in the history of the WAC conference. You could make the argument for Danny Ainge, couldn't you? Three on two for Arizona. Johnson's foul. As much as we all love Danny, I, I'm going to go with Tiny Archibald. Okay. If El Paso, if Texas foul. Western was in the whack at that time. At that time. At the line for the Wildcats, shooting two, number That's five. the problem, Stanley Andy. Johnson. It's so difficult to remember back. You know, people don't remember, but Danny Ainge was a great baseball player. He was a Major League Baseball player, too. Danny Ainge is a great dude. You talk about fun to play with. Yeah. That would be the game for the Wildcats number three, Craig Victor. Although I did get in the fight with him one day. In practice? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What happened? He was trying to scramble my brainwaves, and he kept getting in my groove and rhythm. <laughs> so, I had to knock okay. him, so I had to knock him down and out, and he got mad, and then he got helped out by one of my own teammates on the second string, Jerry Seasting. <laughs> and so I had to tell Jerry and Danny that the only thing that I have more distaste for than a guard is a second string guard. <laughs> Arizona turns it over. 7.41 to play. Hollis Jefferson, Rondé throw it down. 
Beautiful passing along the baseline. Everybody involved. Complete domination by the champions of the Conference of Champions. Pac-12 basketball is presented by Domino's. Visit Domino's.com right now to take advantage of a great offer on pizzas from Domino's. Look at Old Main, the oldest building on the campus here in Tucson. Home of the Arizona Wildcats, who are cruising 69-42, trying to go to 9-0 as they host Michigan coming up on Saturday. What a beautiful day it was here today, and this Gorgeous. campus is spectacular. Walk around the mall area at all out here? I was studying my notes on Caleb Tarzucci. Here's a steal. Here goes Stanley Johnson. Twelve for Johnson, and it's 71-42, Arizona. Now, I was looking up all the players that have played at modern day, and a great contribution to the sport of basketball that Gary McKnight has made, a longtime coach, ten-time state champions in California, including the last four straight with Stanley foul Johnson. Against Arizona. Well, my, there's a great legacy of Arizona players from modern day. You look at Miles Simon, who was the most outstanding player in the 1997 Final Four. Reggie Geary. Reggie Geary is a great defender here. But then you got from Duke, you got Taylor King, who played for Gary McKnight. The Ware twins, Travis and David. Travis starring for the New York Knicks right now. Jamal Sampson, who played at Cal. Xavier Johnson, Big X Johnson, right now Colorado. starring for Colorado. Yeah. And then a junior over there right now, playing for Gary McKnight at Modern Day, is MJ Cage, Michael Cage's son. Michael Cage was a really good player. Final seven minutes. Excellent. Nice pass. Excellent. Craig Victor finding Ristich. That was on Wolverines number 20. Brendan Evans has Brendan Evans is foul. fouled out of the game. The way they flash in from the weak side, draw the zone up, and then At the line for the Ristich just slides in behind. He has an excellent future. And, with, and, and this guy, Craig Victor, the nice job that he did in getting him the ball. Now, Victor has been kind of left out because everybody else is pushing, but that's where the peer pressure comes in. And, okay, let's, let's pick it up a little bit. Victor coming out of New Orleans, part of that fabulous freshman class, and the recruiting machine just keeps on coming. Oh, my gosh. The great class that Sean Miller has lined up already for next year. Ristich hits both. So Ristich with 11, four Wildcats in double figures tonight. And once again, the Wildcats will lead the Pac-12 in attendance for, I believe, what, the 28th straight year? Baseline spins off for Nelson. And it's right back to Utah Valley out of bounds and full house every night here in Tucson. All new seats, the new lighting. The new locker rooms, the facilities they have back behind the scenes. Next summer, they're going to do the indoor concourse and the outer facade of the building. A block shot from Victor. Hollis Jefferson to the basket and one. How fun for Arizona, and how frustrating, disappointing, and embarrassing for Utah Valley. But the defense leading to offense. Jefferson. Craig Victor sending it back and he's igniting yet another fast break and the, the rhythm and the offense. And, you know, this, this game tonight can serve as a springboard because Michigan's coming in here Saturday, the other Wolverines. And then you got Oakland next week at a game that we'll have here. Yes. Are you coming back? Or I'm coming you, back. Or have you already asked to be relieved from duty with sitting next to me? If, if they're going to put me with you, I'm definitely going to come <laughs> back. Though. And then you don't have to, you don't have to patronize me there. Not patronizing you. But then, come on, it's fun. But then you got, well, I'm having fun. I'm having a blast. Okay. So then they got the two games. 
at UTEP and at UNLV. And those games will be true tests. Get out on the road. Get it done against real teams with real crowds. Get ready for the conference season. Stanley Johnson. Yeah, going to UTEP, going to Vegas. Conference play also. Oh, and, and what Stanley Johnson Stanley gets the role. Johnson. In just a few short years, Larry Kriskoviak has already brought Utah to where we always hoped it would be. And Utah second in the conference a year ago in attendance per game. Great basketball fans there in the state of Utah. Chad Ross from deep. Chad Ross. Eight for Ross tonight, a new career high for the senior. A couple of threes. Elliott Pitts launches. Ristich on the offensive glass. What a find. <laughs> Come on, you put him in the conversation right now with best young big men. In terms of skill, timing, position, understanding how to play. Look at him. As, as he spends, you know, he just got here. As he spends more time with Chris Rounds. Chad, Chad Ross. Ross, another bucket. And Ross had a couple of very nice plays. Really, he and Zach Nelson have been the shining stars for Dick Hunsaker. Timeout for a That's substitution. A yes, number one, Keith York. So York is in. Now a first appearance for also Matt Korchak. Number 31, Matt Korchak. Senior from right here in Tucson, six foot ten. Get him some playing time. Don't miss again. Number three, Arizona men's basketball action again next Tuesday night. They play host to Oakland. Coverage starts at six o'clock Pacific time right here on Pac-12 Networks. Yes, Bill and I will be back unless you know something that we don't. Did you happen to catch Jay Billis last night on Keith Olbermann? I missed it. Excellent. Great repartee, repartee between two brilliant speakers. Gabe York a three. And nice to see Keith Olbermann talking about basketball for a change. Yeah, he tends to stick toward baseball and football. That's about the time he branched out, right? He's confused. He needs to get, like you, he needs to get out. I need to get out. Final four minutes. Darius Hamilton for the baseline spins off and Victor the rebound. Parker Jackson Cartwright. So can Arizona beat Kentucky and Duke in Texas? Can they beat them? Yeah, yeah, they can beat them. Gabe York missing. The way they play defensively gives them a good chance. I mean, Kentucky's awfully impressive. You win big games with offense. Look at Arizona still undefeated, right? Yes, they are. Okay. And I have a feeling they're going to still be undefeated when this game ends. They started this game undefeated, right? Okay. Yes, they do. Jackson Cartwright to the basket. So their last game, their last loss was Wisconsin. In the Elite Eight of last NCAA tournament. In Anaheim yes. in overtime. In a game that they could have and really should have won. But they didn't stop Frank Kaminsky. No. Couldn't play offense. And that is what this team needs to get going. The Foul flow. against the Wildcats. The flow, the surge, the, the ability to play great when it's all on the line. Be that prickly cactus. Take that ball and throw it down one time. Tonight's close shave of the day brought to you by Barbasol. And our play of the game, player of the game. Brought to you by Barbasol is Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Another double-double for the sophomore. 12 points, 10 rebounds, and the igniter off the bench. Rondé did all the little things that contribute to victory, and this guy is so selfless. Here's a guy who went to the coach and said, Coach, I'll come off the bench. Let Stanley Johnson take the light. I'll get it done in whatever way I can. I'll do whatever it takes to help the team win. Now, in the locker room for the Arizona Wildcats, they got this little deal where they keep track of all the things that help a squad win, that don't, that don't ever get noticed or credited. 
So, you know, things like drawing a charge, the first to the floor after a loose ball, the hard play on a ball that stops a defense or stops an offensive foray, a screening assist, scissors play where the home team gets the ball. Oh, yes. Craig Victor is fouled. Get a oh, bunch of rebounds, pass the ball around, and when you do foul. that, they keep track of this. You know, that great coaching staff, that's pass the deck on the Victor. left, that's Sean Miller in the middle, Damon Stoudemire. And Book Richardson. Book Richardson on the, edge. on the right there. There's oh. Book. This is like an iPad here. You just say something and it just moves. That's right there. How cool. But they keep track of all this all day, all practice long, all week long, and then they give out awards. They give you gold jerseys. They give you gold A's. It's like a little star chart there. What a staff they have here. The, en the envy of every basketball program west of Lexington, Kentucky. 83-49. The Wildcats have the lead. How about this? So Arizona has 14 assists tonight. Right. U Utah Valley's made 14 shots on the floor tonight. 14 shots they made in the whole game? Yes. Or was that this half? 14 field goals the whole game. They made five this half. Yeah, it's tough to win now. And you guys keep talking about defense. Offense that wins Chad championship. Ross. Chad Ross continues to just be an exquisite player here. 12 for Ross. I didn't know they had Wolverines in Utah. It will, how about this? So last week, Drew Mellon, the senior, the walk-on from Santa Ana misses, kept alive by Arizona. So how about this? Last week, Arizona played both Gardner-Webb and Gonzaga. They were both Bulldogs, okay? And this this week, week, it's Wolverine week around here. The Wolverines tonight, they got the other Wolverines, Michigan, on Saturday coming in. Are they trying to save money on the programs or something? Or, <laughs> and they got tons of money here. And the light bulbs in the scoreboard? The job that Greg Byrne has done. Wow. Greg Victor from Elliott Pitts. 34 point lead. Arizona's matched their largest lead of the night. And a timeout for a substitution. Checking in for the Wolverines, number 14, Corey Cardwell. And checking in for the Wildcats, number 50, Jacob Hazard. For number zero, Parker Jackson Carter. To see what Arizona has been able to do. I mean, because Greg Byrne is just in his fifth year as the a AD here. That's athletic director. Like, yes, like WAC the AD. Is Western Athletic Conference. Okay, just, just gotcha. checking. Okay. You know, need, knowing you need to get out more. And then the president, Dr. I Ann, figured that out. Dr. Ann Reaver Hart, all these triple names here. She's only been here three years. And to have this kind of success with that recent of a changeover of the key positions, truly remarkable. And a three-pointer from the corner knocked in by Eli, Eli Robinson. Robinson. But since Greg Byrne is here, how about the baseball teams won a national championship? Congratulations. The success that Rich Rodriguez and the football team has had, winning the Pac-12 South this year is Victor Lazy. They're going to the Fiesta Bowl. And then what Sean Miller has done here with the basketball program, elevating it back to the level where Lute Olsen had it. And the, the fact that this place is packed every single game. Robinson gets the roll. And everybody at the restaurants, on the streets, at the airport, wherever you go, that's all they're talking about is Wildcat sports. Here's Jacob Hazard, the grandson of UCLA legend Walt Hazard. Also a patient of Dr. Ernie Vandeway, the legend who's celebration of life he passed away recently his celebration of life will be this friday in los angeles and the remaining members of the hazard family will be there because jacob hazard was treated by the legend himself dr ernie vanderley thank you and that'll take us to the final horn here in tucson the wildcats now 9 and 0 27 straight home wins 87 56 they knock off utah valley we saw a real team tonight a sluggish start arizona it's become their trademark, but now they've come alive here. The second team, Hollis Jefferson, he keyed it, and then the middle guy, Parker Jackson Cartwright. Oh, my gosh, what a find. So a double-double for Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Stanley Johnson leading the way with 14 points as Arizona with four players in double figures. For Bill Walton and a great Pac-12 member through Roxy Burns team saying so long from Tucson, Arizona. Again, the final. The number three, Arizona Wildcats, 87, Utah Valley, 56. This has been a production of the Pac-12 Networks. Coming up next is Football Weekly.